for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture is PlayStation podcast. Over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 20 plus years. Wait, that's not right at all. 12, mate. 12, 12. plus years in that game's me. I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to join us in future conversations with us, come check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and X. All of those links can be found in the description below. Where the fuck is my pen? If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist. We can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your family about this position pod. If you are listening to us on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. If you want to support us financially, you can by heading over to patreon.com slash the pop as well as our merchandise store, popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Max. Thanks, thanks for that little ASMR fucking section when you were going from left to right. On oh, your mark yeah. From, so for those that like, don't know, I'm, I'm trying my very best to do like timestamps as we go. Um, just, you know, because it's probably a good idea. Um... You want, to, you want to skip our personal bullshit? Here you go. Here's the here's the timestamp. Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, but then there are people that are like, we only want to hear that shit. I'm like, well, that's weird, but cool. Go ahead. Um, but yeah. So, for those that don't know, we're, we're recording on Easter Sunday. So, as we always... Not every Easter Sunday, but most Sundays. Happy happy Easter to everyone at home. Happy Easter to yourself, Max. How have you celebrated your Easter? Oh, we did it. We did an egg hunt this morning with... Yeah the kid and then we were out for dinner tonight yeah and what, what, what'd you do with that dinner huh I had barbecue and tequila so uh it's, it's, this could be a wild ride everybody it could, be a, it could be a wild one or max may just fall asleep in the middle of the yeah he might just like is, conk you know but tequila is, tequila isn't known for its conking ability kind well, of see the thing is it's not just tequila so you know how last weekend on a friday night i messaged you like ah oh, must be the weekend i'm in an emergency room yes spoiler alert max was in an emergency room again this friday night how do you because ha- you do private and you cost you dollary dues every time you go i didn't i didn't this time i went i went public smart. I went to the July hospital. no not smart i got there at 10 o'clock at night at three o'clock in the morning, the doctor went, you're probably not going to get seen till the shift change at 8 a.m. Because we've got 11 ambulances that have come in because some fuckwit did some burnouts in a paddock and killed someone. So there that- was police there doing interviews and they're like, you're not going to get seen. Just go home. I'm like, okay. And quite frankly, I was sick of my kid going, has the doctor called my name yet? Has the doctor called my name yet? Yeah. Back to what we talked about last week. You have absolutely in- induced some Munchausen in your kid. No, so what happened was, on Monday, mm-hmm. Hadley had a fall at kinder. Okay, that's a pretty good reason. Kinder called us and said, Hadley's complaining of pain in her cheek. Okay. She wants to come home. So we kept her home from kinder all week, and she kept complaining every day. She's like, hey, my cheek's really sore. And, and I said, can you point to where it is? And she's like, it's down here. I'm like, that's not cheek pain. That's fucking tooth pain. Mm. You worried so, that she's like wanged a tooth or something? So, me worried, wang your tooth because she fell. I'm like, okay, this is this is we're gonna go and do. Um, we're gonna go and do. Go get you checked out. Yes. And then I went. So we took her to, took her to the emergency room. Mm-hmm. Didn't get seen. So we took her to the the non emergency emergency room the next morning. Turns out she has one of the gnarliest ear infections that the doctor's ever seen. <laughs> Okay, well that that and that's different. That explains the pain mm. in her cheek. Could also explain her fall because the she, ear infection she, would have jacked up her balance. Because she dumb kid, she don't know where. Yeah, <laughs> um, things. So. Actually, no, but like that's that's totally true. Like in terms of pain in weird locations, like when my appendix nearly burst, I had ball pain. That was bizarre, and I rang the nurse on call. I'm like, hey, my nutsack hurts, and she's like, thanks. <laughs> Um, well, it's like when babies tear their asshole, get, their, their butthole gets. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was one it was one of those things where I'm like, hey, like I, I I have intense abdominal pain. 
I haven't shit in three days. My ball sack hurts. What's going on? She goes, eh, you should be right. So I wait another two days. And then I was like, this is kind of unbearable. I'm going to go to the doctor. And he's like, motherfucker, your appendix is about to explode. Can you drive Can you drive to the hospital right now? Can you gra- on the way, uh, dr- grab a two liters of water, chug that shit because you need to get like uh, ultrasounded in the next 20 minutes. I'm like, yes, mm. sir. And then within, yeah. So thankfully, um, you know, your daughter didn't have ball pain. That's good to know. So now the the fun part is putting eardrops in her ear four times a day because apparently the world is ending. Every time you got to put the drops in? Oh, yeah, because this kid, because she has to sit still for 10 minutes lying down, which is fine if she doesn't have eardrops in. But if she has eardrops in, 10 minutes is like an eternity. Uh, yes, can confirm. ADHD. Well, not not saying your daughter has that, but for me, if if I have to fucking sit somewhere, it's the worst thing in the world. I want to do it, but but I could I could easily sit there and get lost in some bullshit. Like today, like I did I absolutely did this today. Like start this evening. Like so, I had my son um this weekend. I had him Thursday, Friday. He you know with him living in my house as well as my his 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 mum's house, different houses. We share a distribution of of those festival festive holidays. So uh. We have alternate, so with he gets to wake up at uh, Millie, my ex-wife, uh, his mum, uh, on Easter. Uh, he gets to wake up at my house at Christmas, and we swap. So it was my my normal weekend. I had him Thursday, Friday, Saturday, took him back to his mum's. And then this morning, got kindly invited to go have Easter breakfast with him. That was awesome. Um, did uh, Easter eggs exchanges. And then he's like, hey, can I go to your house? I'm like, why? He goes, because Charlie's there. And Charlie is my partner's cat. He doesn't give a shit about me. He wants to see my cat. So he came over here, cat, that sort of stuff. You know, that's your cool. son's choosing pussy over here. <laughs> Which is understandable, man. Like, you know, it's good. It's good to know those things now. It's good to know where I stand when it comes to, to my son. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing. Cause he's a little ADHD boy, right? Like trying to get him to like sit still is the worst. And then I go, Hey, you want to sit with Charlie? He's like, yes. And he will be there and he will lock eyes on that cat and like sit with it and pat it and treat it all kinds of nice. He's like, I'm never going to leave where I'm sitting because Charlie doesn't want to leave. I'm like, okay. So that's, that's, that's the trick. Just, you gotta find, you gotta find a way, give her the bluey game or something. And she can just lay it on the yeah. side. She was, she was literally lying there for like half an hour watching a TV show. And the second we put e- the eardrops in, she's like, I can't sit here. I have to get up. I have to move. So I just chill the fuck out. Please. You're upsetting your baby brother. Cause she's like, she fuck him. Off, he doesn't need to get eardrops. Because when she goes off, he gets really upset because she's upset. Because he uses his loud noise, I assume, and then cracks yeah. it. Yeah. That's poo. Yeah. Other than that, it's been fine. She's yeah. getting there. She's yeah. doing it. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. D- d- even the understanding of doing this will make your cheek stop hurting, which is... W- I guess for her, she's like, why are you fuck with my ear? My cheek hurts. Yeah. <laughs> when I got home to- because when we got home tonight, I said, I want you to go and hop into bed and dad will bring your medicine. She's like, not the ear. I'm like, no, we're not doing mm-hmm. eardrops. Uh, the Reverend Sorry. Park in the chat says, "Time to rip out her whole ear system, replace it with a synthetic ears." It is true; it's a good idea. We did, you know. I, I said I was playing uh, back when I played Cyberpunk at the tail end of last year. Like you know, the cybernetics, there's potential. Yeah, it's just you know. Imagine all the. If, imagine if I had the reduced ball sack pain. If my if I had a synthetic ball sack or a synthetic appendix, which would make no sense because the appendix is utterly useless. I mean, to be fair, we should just not have appendixes since they do. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, I want to replace it with a robot one and then get that removed when that gets robotically infected, I guess. I don't know how. I don't know why I chose to do that. But yeah, that's you get you Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, my appendix has a virus. That's weird. It's a Trojan, vi- it's a Trojan virus because it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I said it's similar to yourself. Very chill sort of weekend uh, for the Easter uh, not a lot happened during the week. Uh, what What's exciting next week? The oh, so look, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm in Brisbane Tuesday, Wednesday. Cool, fun. That's exciting. Work stuff. Uh, but what is exciting is next weekend because next weekend is motherfucking WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. And I know you don't care. Be welcome to come watch WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. So for, I, for, for every for, for some reason, I always think WrestleMania is later in the year. Nah, WrestleMania is always April. 
Uh, yeah, sort of early April. And Reverend Puck, WrestleMania. Yeah. Look, don't you want to you know, see you know, The Rock you know what, wrestle no, for the you first time in about I'm, eight years? I don't know what I'm excited for next weekend. What's that? Fucking daylight savings to be over. Oh, man. Yeah. What a transition this week has been. It's suddenly out of nowhere. It's darker and it's weird. And I don't like it. But I also love it because the weather's changing. And right now we're in that middle ground, right? Like where my house is either super... Like my, once again, we've, just, we've bitched about my house on here before. Old 60s, 70s house. No insulation. It's either cold as shit or hot as fuck. It's two choices. But right now, like the mornings are nice because it's cold. So I'm getting all nice in my, in my blankies and it's lovely. And... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, mute goes, oh, you guys don't get it yet. No, no, we're getting rid of it. We've had daylight savings. We're fucking it off. Now we're going back into regular time. Um, and then the afternoon's nice. So the house is still kind of warm. It's lovely. It's that lovely time. There's about three weeks when my house is bearable. And then it's going to get fucking cold. And it's probably going to get like negative three degrees in my kitchen. And awesome. I can't wait. But daylight savings can get rooted. Because like waking up at normal time and it's, bl- and it's dark is confusing to me. And it, but, but it getting darker at night, much appreciated. Except for today, yeah. I, was, I was playing some VR today, and it was bright when I put when I put the headset on, and I took it off, and it was dark, and it was very confusing, very confronting. <laughs> uh, uh, was there anything else? Uh, yeah, so the answer is WrestleMania. As I was saying, Max, you're welcome to come around. You get to see The Rock wrestle for the first time in about nine years um, in a tag team match. Him, Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. I'm excited, and then I got Monday off as well because WrestleMania does two days now. And I'm a giant dork about it. And I can't not wait. MGB says it's my favorite it's his favorite time of the year. And it's my favorite time of the year. This is my Super Bowl. This is my this is wrestling Christmas. Two days of wrestling. <laughs> Thanks, Max. I appreciate your excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that the killer came out then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's get into the section we call uh what we've been playing. We talk about what we have been playing. Super Marcy also confirms that WrestleMania is their Christmas too. Oh, it is. It is good shit. It's the best time. Best goddamn time. Uh, yes, Max, let's get into what, what, what have we been playing? Uh, what have you been playing? Fuck off. No, I, I, I check out PlayStation Boob Simulator. Uh, <laughs> uh, boob. I tell Blade. Yeah, so the uh, yeah, the, so the demo for Stella Blade come out correctly this week, not like two weeks ago when the whole game came out, but a demo, but not really. Um, all like, so Stella Blade came out this week. I have, I, I I'm not going to play it because it's really not my kind of game, and I'm pretty sure when you tell me about what the gameplay is, you're going to confirm it. My problem with this game is this Twitter discourse, and we'll get to that in a minute. Max, how are you finding? Stellar Blade in its demo form. Kind of plays like Neo. Okay. If you played, if you, uh, oh, okay. Look, all right. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, not Neo. Nia. Oh, Nia. oh not fuck Neo. that. Boo! Boo! I take that back. Boo! Boo you, Max. <laughs> tricking me. I just played Rise of the Ronin and it was fine and I wanted more Neo and it wasn't that. And you're like, this game's yeah. like Neo. I'm like, yeah. sick. Can I play some Neo? You're like, no, it's oh, Neo. You son of a Nia. bitch. MGB in the chat. Yeah, you heal. That is true wrestling level shenanigans. Bullshit. Yeah, even down to the HUD, it looks kind of looks the same. The health bar is a little se- like segmented. Are we uh, talking near replicant or near automata or no, whatever uh, the hell? Automata. I would say automata. Oh, yeah. You just, have, you just don't have that little robot chasing you around to shoot. But. Look, in a similar vein, bullet, like, bullet. you know, Nia, uh, Automata, Automata, however you want to pronounce it, a uh, lot of upskirt moments in that game because it's made by yeah. fucking gross yeah. people. I'm, I'm sure they're lovely, but they just it's it's a different country. It's a different time. Hey, um, and on, and what? What? Don't, don't um, thing I make now? Who? Uh, what's their name? That's that's the question. <sighs> um, thing I... Yeah, they, those guys. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I don't um, know. I can't think of them. What you, you Googleize <sighs> it? I am um, Platinum Platinum Games. Yeah, yeah, and Plat- Platinum. Yeah, well, Platinum, Platinum made Bayonetta, Bayonetta, which is okay. The irony of me shitting okay. on like fucking obscurity Bayonetta. games. I'm like Bayonetta, Bayonetta rules. So, <laughs> 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 which Bayonetta is just essentially a game that's all about like fucking uh, your body becomes like your suit is just your hair and you get when you do hair moves it takes away also 
Uh, big shout out to MGB for their five stream streak, by the way. Much appreciated. That seems ridiculous. I feel like MGB's here every week. <laughs> oh, there are some weeks where I think they're streaming, so it kind of comes and goes. Had a couple of follows uh, in, in the last week too, so I love that as well. But yes, Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. So it's 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 exactly this. It plays very much like Nier. It's it's that action adventure uh, action adventure RPG. It's got some uh, it's got skill trees. It's got all that fun stuff. Uh, the demo. I haven't played the whole demo. I kind of just played the introduction part to the mm. demo, and then I had to turn it off last night because I was literally falling asleep on my chair because I'd slept for like an hour the night before because you know hospital and all that. Mm-mm. Um, so it's it's got that hard style combat that that Nia had. It's got bosses. Um, a, a, you know, nice variety variety of enemy types. It's it really reminds me of um, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay. Yeah. In its in its style. Um, the, because <clears throat> we had the discussion today about the discourse around like the boob physics. Yeah. So, okay. It's so not that bad so, in the demo, yeah. it's obviously heavily marketed that way because let's sex sells. Yeah. So I'll, to, for those that don't know, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit just in case there's someone that's, that's not aware. So one of the big selling points, at least that, that it's being marketed this way, or the internet has taken it this way behind Stellar Blade is that you have a very voluptuous female lead, um, who's wearing this skin sight, skin tie armor and it's essentially like a flight suit. Yeah. It's like a flight suit, but even though it's a tight suit that holds everything in, apparently it doesn't, it has the most malleable material around her boobs and or butt where like, no matter that, like they just move like chaos, like this jelly. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I do wonder whether the people that have made this have seen boob. Um, because they don't really match boobage and how it works. Um, but the, the problem that I have with it directly is, is how it's appearing on, on Twitter, where the discourse around the game is not like, Hey, this game looks kind of cool. Or I'm really curious in what this is. It's like, ha, two T's. Yeah. I want to buy seven copies of this game because it's got boobs in it. And fuck the woke agenda because you know what you know what the woke agenda was never was always about? Taking away my boobs and games. Not about the mistreatment of individuals and like, you know, the just the porn shit. Nah, fucking titties. And I hate it. I fucking hate it. The game could, like I'm not gonna play the game, it's not my game anyway, but Look, I, so I played the demo and I literally, from the first bit of combat, I fought like three enemies at once. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. This well, great. yeah, look, and, and that's, look, that doesn't surprise me because <clears throat> this is part of why I, I do what I do in terms of like making this show, etc. Is for me, discussing games is way more fun. And yeah. I knew that when I spoke to you, I'd be like, hey, tell me well, about the I game. Mean, I mean, I've been, I've been hyped from it since they showcased it, what, like four, four, Poor bloody um said it plays ago which makes sense because like ago. visually it look yeah it, it looked like it played like near and i'm pretty sure yeah. we may have gone is that near before we saw it with stellar blade so i mean i don't know how deep of a story it's gonna have they it's kind of very surface level in the in the demo mm-hmm. um and again i haven't finished the whole demo um and i i think i saw someone say once you finish the actual demo if you go back to the main menu there's more stuff that you can kind of fiddle with yeah uh, which awesome. seems interesting um so i haven't dove deep into like i got to like a, a, the first rest point in the first area once you get out of the f- the first little section so i haven't even you know checked out the skill trees but it has like active usable skills depending on how deep you are in your combos or by blocking parrying dodging you uh you you essentially charge up your special abilities so it seems like it has a fairly in-depth to a degree combat system which mm-hmm. is what i like um but yeah it's just well you know i've been interested in it i would definitely keen to check it out more uh but for now the demo is pretty short uh, uh sorry not short it's a pretty small download uh if nia was in your wheelhouse give this a check out um go and play it in front of your significant other maybe <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, yeah, you, you act, you're you climbing a ladder and you're accidentally looking no, at the no, butt, yeah. and your partner walks in being like, "What's this?" And then you get an atri- and then you get an achievement for doing that. Yep. <laughs> which you know, near had look up the skirty, get a trophy. Ugh. Uh, yeah, to the point where the character actually turned around and had a go at you for doing it. Yep. That was funny. Cool. It's it's great when you can put that in your game. Well done. 
Well done. Cool. I'm glad uh, we've, I'm glad we've man, progressed I'm as just a general society. Like, I have no man. issue with, with you know, identifying attractive individuals. That's fucking, that's rad. But, like, I feel like there's a line. Well, to be fair, the model is accurate to the person that they base the model that's on. That's not my issue. Congratulations. Like, Shout out to her. She is well it's, endowed. It's not like they've over-sexualized the person. It's not like they've exaggerated her... Mm. Oh, yeah, no, no. Once again, like, it's not an issue of the exaggerated parts. They haven't made it gross in that way. They've just deliberately picked someone to evoke a certain... Yeah, because, like, when she moves, nothing else in her body... Everything else is fucking rock solid, except for two parts. Three. Four. Three? Four? Yeah. Two tits and two cheeks. What I call them before her fat sacks. (laughs) Yeah, lovely. Uh, But, like... and it's an inter- it's interesting. I'm aware that there is a little hypocrisy in what I'm saying because I have an oh, issue yeah, with this. Because I because I, I brought up the how would you feel if Kratos was just like swinging Wait, dick? Constantly. Dude, if Kratos was hanging dong, go ahead. Like I thought it was hilarious when Baldur's Gate three brought in dick physics. I wanted to create a new character, just be like, <laughs> penises are funny. Um, but you know what I mean? It's just. Like I said, like, because an example is Metal Gear Solid Five, right? I had no issue with their their explanation of quiet. I get it. I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's fine. But, like, I, I, I don't know. I guess the discourse was different then at the time. But, like, uh, it, it, yeah, it feels it feels like I'm being weirdly prudish when I'm not a prude what was that? in any sense. What up quiet being, being, like, did she breathe through her skin and she was essentially suffocating herself if she was wearing clothes? Yeah, if she wore clothes, she'd suffocate because she's got... But once again, within the world of Kojima's bullshit, I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, does it make it okay? Well, no, but it makes sense within the world. And it's better than her looking like an eight-year-old but being a 1,200-year-old god so we can pull my dick to it, so we can all collectively pull our dicks to it. Like, I, it, 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 once again, it sits in that line that I have with... J- with Japanese or you know some of some of that area content around sexualization of women in general and how women are treated in general and uh, you know that there are games that the you that, that live within that genre that don't do it so it's yeah. totally doable it's not as it's not a cultural thing because there are other games that, that don't do it and we have a shared worldwide culture now that doesn't fucking make sense but that's me getting really like focused on something for no reason that I don't have to care about. Welcome to the internet. You know what I did really care about this week though, Max? Well, I write down a timestamp. Yeah, no, just, just just, because I'll I'll quickly wrap myself up. Yep. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And that's all I've been playing this week. I I got really into Yellowstone and I watched five seasons in the last (laughs) week. Nice. (laughs) That was my week. I took a, I took a week off. (laughs) <laughs> just was watching cowboys and shit apparently it is really really good though it's fucking so good <laughs> and i hate westerns this <laughs> is so good it's good character drama though like you can suck like you said it's the political intrigue it's the same as like sons of anarchy right i don't like motorbikes or motorbike culture sons of anarchy fucking ruled because it's it, it was just hamlet and um, you know it was really good character drama it was awesome but yeah, uh really for my like love of methamphetamine and what well, yeah what's well, like yeah it's like breaking bad breaking bad's incredible i'm not like i'm not a big user of methamphetamine oh, no, i am a big user of methamphetamine i have it every day i'm not a big fan of uh uh drug dealing no I'm not, mm. <laughs> the DEA, maybe. yeah um, yeah i guess the, yeah i'm trying to think what part i have issue with in <laughs> breaking bad is it the hunt, uh, the hunt for power i guess i'm not i'm not someone that needs power in the same way that you know the walt does he needs yeah, power of his will uh, I, I try I don't like lung cancer that is true there we go I don't like lung cancer break bad's really good uh, you'd ask if I'm going to fall into the rabbit hole of the yellow sense been awesome maybe oh apparently there is a bunch Ryan <sighs> just hates New Mexico confirmed says Reverend <laughs> Puck uh, well uh, the only way I would know that it was Mexico because they shoot it with that yellow filter he, he hates the American healthcare system <laughs> yeah that's true the American like if that was filmed in any other country be like you have cancer here's free treatment he's like done credits like Breaking Bad would be a very different movie it'd be a short film at that point it'd be crazy alright back to what, what I was talking about so this week I finally wrapped 
I say finally, because I think I touched upon it last week, but only a little bit. Uh, I did complete Alone in the Dark. So big thank you to the team over at Play On uh, ANZ for providing us the review copy of Alone in the Dark. So I originally played this at PAX last year, and then there was the little demo, and then the demo came out again later. So I played it again, and just but just kind of like focused a bit more on the world and taking it all in. But to put it simply, Max, Alone in the Dark is exactly what i wanted it to be to me well, it is so, perfect so when you when you told me today that you're on credits i'm like fuck that was quick and you're like yeah man it's like it took me like eight hours i'm like oh i'm suddenly way more intrigued by this game yeah and it's because because i've been playing long 50 hour motherfuckers like i would love a real short sweet palate cleanser yeah. so and it sounds like this is what it's gonna be exactly so to it to to i'll lay down the basics mm. of what the game is so it is essentially a reimagining of the original Lone of the dark way back in the day so you follow two characters edward Carnby, uh, who's played by david harbour in this which is interesting uh and uh emily hartwood uh you ask go to a location in new orleans a house called DeSetto to find your uncle jeremy jeremy hartwood as he has gone missing uh, a letter has been sent to to emily you uh, edward Carnby has been hired as the pre- uh, per, per, the what are they called pi private detective okay. private investigator to come in and help find him that's the plan you go you go to the house and weird shit happens because it's alone in the dark that's weird shit right done and very similar to alone in the dark back in the day you can play as either the you know the one character or the other character and you go on a path and there are there are variations in that path so alone in the dark at its in its original concept was just a clone of resident evil even down to like the 2.5d camera uh you know the the metroidvania aspect of going around a big mansion and collecting clues and sort of unlocking shit and telling this weird batshit story and then a big monster fight at the end right nailed it absolutely fucking nailed it and that is why i think the game is exactly what i wanted when i saw alone in the dark get announced and that looks like they were do- and then having played it at pax i went i know what this game is going to be it is going to be this beautiful nostalgia driven uh old school you know metroidvania horror like locked in a location it's going to be bang on and it's and it's exactly what i got is the game, you know, exceptional in every way? No, not at all. Camera's a bit jank. The, the models are a bit jank sometimes. It, it is it is a straight up, straight up double A game. But I knew that going in. And weirdly to me, that added, it amplified a lot of its nonsense yeah. in terms of, I know, it, it felt like that weird 80s horror movie bullshit and like everything, like some of the things just don't make sense, but it's all visually intriguing um it's dope and then on the top of that you know i'm going around i'm getting clues and like you find a puzzle and you have to then go into your memos and all the documents you've collected to find evidence and clues to like suss it out and then you can use it to rearrange the pictures or suss out the code for this thing it's dope and i said it's only look it's five chapters there's you know there's a trophy for completing it in under three hours if you speed run it you can get it in under three and there's also a trophy for going over eight hours so i got that one because i finished it in about nine um because i you know i was just having fun and exploring and, and making sure I, I cleared every room the best i could um yeah it's, it's, exa- it's exactly the game that i wanted yeah and yeah it, it's just I get yeah, because similar to yourself, like I'm trying to like trying to get into a groove, right? There's a I, I don't know what it is. I'm just like I'm finding something. Rise of the Ronin mm-hmm. didn't get it for me. Come back to Tekken next week, right? I had Tekken coming back next week with Eddie Gordo. Hell's yes, you know. And then like I've I've got my my usual dailies, you know, like my um, WWE, my MLB The Show, and you know even Hell Divers. I jump in occasionally, but not even to really play it, just to collect all the medals from everyone else doing all the hard work and then buying shit in the in the in the war bonds and then not playing it um you know so it was good to like have a game that absolutely hooked me because it did like the second i booted it up and i got saw david harbour giving the most flat fucking performance i've ever heard i was like i know i know what i'm going for i know what i'm getting and it was dope it was it was batshit it was weird there are moments where it kind of turns the story on its head because the idea is that everything weird is happening within this house this mansion in new orleans but that's only because jeremy is keeping it that way by almost traveling interdimensionally 
into his memories. So you're experiencing the real world and the version of his world and his psyche. And then there are moments where, like, because I played the run that I did, I did with with Kambi because David Harbour funsies. Um, and there, there are moments where it pushes you to go, well, is this your psyche or is this Jeremy's psyche or is this the real world? And you're like, fuck, what actually is it? So it's, it's interesting in that way how it kind of fucks with expectations a little bit. Are you implying that Hopper went into the Upside Down? He did went into the Upside Down. Straight up. Straight up. He went into, the hell, went into the Hellboy world. <laughs> yeah, straight up, upside down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, one of the other games that I did check out uh, this week, actually just before I came in, uh, was a VR game called Forest Farm. So this came to us through Keymailer. Um, it was one of the, I think talked about it in pre- a couple of weeks ago, where it, bing, it hits me on the go, Forest Farm, what's this? click it open and it's like hey it's an open world sandbox farming rpg i was like you son of a bitch you get me you know it you nailed it you you I, whether you looked at my account my my account or not i don't know you well, sorry at the, the popsy account i can't tell you however what i can tell you is you fucking nailed it because there is some jank there's a little bit of here and there but at its core i kind of like what it is so it is exactly that it is a little, uh, in a little RPG, in the VRs, where you go collectively do farming things. Um, it's stylistically very interesting. Uh, the human, like the the human models, are very simple. I'm trying to think of a visual comparison. They kind of have that uh, phone game polygonal kind of look, oh, yeah. which is interesting. And then you inter- then you see like chickens and rabbits and and other various like food and or creatures uh and they look fucking real like their their assets are like here's a kind of a real looking pig but it looks like a real real looking pig pig picture pasted on a very <laughs> low poly like pig model and but in vr oh. like this allows you to have that open world so i i'm not looking at it like a hindrance to the game i'm looking at it as a way for me to go ah cool i can fuck with this world because they've chosen to not go that full-blown realistic route to create a, a living and engaging how, um, world how immersive is it like obviously it's a psvr2 title so how what how interactive is it in the world itself uh most things at least at, at from where i'm up to are uh interactable like mm-hmm. all the rocks all the trees all you know like everything that's around you you can engage with like whether yep. you want to do various like you know can, chop you, like, can, you, like, pick up, can you pick up like the sheep and shear them or like uh well like- i have i haven't got to a sheep yet but i did i'm like hey what's this picked up and it was manure so that was cool um like you can pick up the rabbits and the chickens and like you can't like pick them up and pat them or anything and just kind of like get a rock like rock solid like you know yeah. in your all right, cool. Like What's that? Like a deer in headlights. Straight up, it's 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 like it's like, um, it's kind of like yeah, this is a live chicken that's moving around. You pick it up and then it just goes like solid. You're like, huh, that's a three D model of a chicken. Cool, and then you put it down. Um, <laughs> like re-animate. yeah, and there's weird physics stuff stuff as well. So the 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 immediate moment I went, ah, that's fucking weird was the fishing rod so you get your, your your five key tools which is your your axe your pickaxe your shovel your watering can and your fishing rod yeah so the fishing rod the 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 line and the hook have the most anti-grav physics i've seen you go huh! you go to cast the rod and it goes woo, and just kind of takes its sweet time and then lands in the water and then it might do something and like there was a moment where i caught two fish by accident and the game didn't like it and it wigged the fuck out and then my fishing rod just disappeared that was cool and then it crashed shortly after so that was awesome i'm glad I probably did something i shouldn't have um but yeah and like looking at where the game can go so you can buy like, you know, sleepers and planks and brick and blah, blah, blah. So it looks like I have the ability to, you know, down the line, build like my own little little hut and my own little farm and livestock. And that's all the shit that I, that, that I get a kick out of when it comes to the farming games. Now, the most, uh, the, 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 I guess the most recent, but not recent in like the last couple months, game that I played on PSVR 2 was Across the Valley, which was another farming VR game they had a different approach in that everything was in fixed locations. So like you, you had to teleport to there and there's your little interactive 
mm-hmm. area. And they, they went for a more uh, stylized uh, pop art, you know, hard hard borders, yeah, you know, that design. Very borderlands I guess. And like play areas as opposed yeah, yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there was that and you know, it felt very surface level. Where here, this feels like it has the potential to be deeper the more time I spend with it. Now, so we get this, we did get this code like two weeks ago. I wasn't able to jump into it until today because like VR is such a thing. You know, it's like such a hassle to like put together. Okay. What's that? It's been hot as shit here. And it? it has been so goddamn hot. So and once again, house, no insulation, as I mentioned, my lounge room is disgusting. So it's strapping something to my head is the worst idea. It's the worst. But uh, today was not too bad, so I threw it on. Had some good, as I once had a good time with it. Just the beginnings of what I've, I've messed about with with Forest Farm, but um, I'm keen to see what it is. Like, knowing that it is simple, kind of works in its favour. Um, it has been on PC for quite a while, but it has come across uh, to the PlayStation uh, 5. It, it's is now available as of the 29th, so it is available out there if you want to go check it out. I'm not sure what the pricing is, but I do appreciate the you having it thrown our way because I said it did nail things that that, that I'm in, certainly interested in. Um, let's see. Let's do a little bit of like the other, you know, other sort of pickup stuff. What else have I been playing? Uh, so usual WWE stuff. Um, MLB The Show. Been playing a lot more of that. Diving into the road to the show. Uh, so Ryan Betson is still is currently on his on the path to being the uh, shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. I am still in the Triple A's. I'm still playing for the Erie Sea Wolves. Uh, my because uh, I've inten- I've intentionally jacked up the difficulty this year, so I'm not cleaning house like I normally would. But I'm sitting on a on a on a sort of a hit average of around 0.4. So like 40 percent of the time I get on base, which is which is pretty good in baseball standards. Um, I went more of a contact hitter than a power hitter. So rather than be able to slog it out of the park, like I can really kind of target where I want it to go and get really good hits within like sort of the, the infield rather than flogging it into the outfield. So it yeah. helps me sort of ideally assist with getting a lot more runners in into sort of a scoring position or help getting a lot of RBIs and sort of getting a lot of people in um, scoring position. From, I thought that would be... Um, a bit more of a of a deeper way to play in terms of going, oh, cool, I, I can probably fuck around with these things rather than just going power, punk, and then either they catch it or they don't, like in terms of, of you know, in the outfield. Um, before we jump into the, the news, now, this is an idea that I threw out on Twitter because, uh, Max, you, you know I love, love my sim games. Right. I don't know that about you at all. No, I, I've never talked shock. about it before. And I'm like, I know it's a shock. I know it's a surprise. But I yeah, fucking no, love simulation games. Simulator games. I, I, look, I'm very aware that this is likely it's just one of my little ADHD idea moments because I've had one semi-recently, which was like, I want to make like, weirdly enough, like a little ADHD TikTok helping account right i want to be able to share like accurate and fucking factual advice around adhd not not these videos of five signs you have adhd like oh you get restless oh you forget what you did when you walked into the room once like you know those like there is so much misinformation on fucking tiktok around adhd and neurodiversity as a whole and mental health fuck it's bad so i wanted to be that point of difference wanted to come in and try to do something and then I realized, and I started writing some stuff, and I got, and I had uh, so many video ideas, and then I realized and then I didn't have enough time. The hard, forgot what he was writing, <laughs> left the room. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's exactly what happened. Um, and then off the back, so the, 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 then I had a shower thought, not about that, something else. About Solar Blade. He had a wait. It wasn't about, yeah, yeah. That was given. You know, like I criticized the game, so because it's like, like every person that criticizes something, new, it's because I secretly love it. That's how it works. And, you know, isn't that the rules? Like, you know, um, not not true at all. Uh, <laughs> but I, 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 having recently played Gas Station Simulator, as always, but with the Tidal Wave DLC, and we did those Let's Plays, and they were a stack of fun. And I was, and, and I was like, oh, maybe this is something, right? Like, and I want an excuse to play more simulator games. So over this weekend, I, I always troll Steam occasionally and be like. This is the hub of simulation games because not everything comes to PlayStation because they tend to need a lot of bullshit 
buttons and stuff, right? So I was playing this game called Contraband Police. The idea of the game is you you are it's the 1981. You are working Border Patrol for some what's it called? Ar- Arkistan, like some Middle Eastern European fucking country, right? And you've got to stand there at the border and do all these things. It's a little, it's a little Border Patrol simulation game. I said I had a demo. I was like, oh, open that. I fucking ruled. I was like, oh, this could be something. And then I also downloaded the demo for Thief, uh, thief Simulator 2. And I played that. And it's all about like, you know, being a thief. So you've got to like find the location. You've got to like gather the intel. You've got to, you know, scope the place out. Suss it out. I'm like, shit. This is awesome. You quit my day job. <laughs> like, this is dope. I'm getting a kick out of this. And I always, you know, you know like farming simulators have always been my wheelhouse. And then gas, gas simulator has been the big one. And then the one I saw recently, which I haven't played yet. Oh, no, I played the demo of and it caught my attention was Cafe Owner Simulator. I'm like, shit. And then um, there's more and more that have caught my attention. And then once again, off the back of doing the gas station stuff, which was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's like, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I can create like a series or a new channel. I don't want to make a new channel because that seems like effort. But like a new series, which is called Simulated Betson. And I go and I play simulation games and I do some let's play content. And, you know, whether it's a, a first impression, I play it once. If it doesn't land or it doesn't get traction, the answer probably, once again, our videos don't get all that much traction anyway. Um, we do way more numbers audio, always have. Um, so it's like, oh, you know, like, okay, well, maybe if it gets interest or I enjoy it, like I'll do a series and I'll do like four, five, six, whatever. But if it's something I only do once, okay, okay, cool. Piss it off. Um, the challenge that I have, Max, because once again, it is true ADHD fashion. And like everything that I do, I, for some reason, am incapable of just having something and enjoying it and loving it. I have mm-hmm. to make it work to justify me doing it in my brain. Same as wrestling. I fell in love with wrestling. And what did I do? Ended up working in it. So now I have an excuse to go, go watch wrestling all the time. Same as games. I love playing games. So what I do, made this whole fucking channel just so I have an excuse to play games and get away with it. That counts as work, right? that's the idea and i had a little fun today because you know i was having a little fun today with the thumbnails the ideas is i just found a picture of me and then the thumbnail would be me on one side and then the other side would be the, you know a background or of the of the game and i'd use my face and i would like farming simulator i would you know put a farming hat on and a pitchfork if it's thief simulator i'd put like a you know domino mask and a beanie and you know if it's you know whatever whatever the idea is it would be you know drug dealer simulator which is a fun game just give yourself those you know speeds the speed dealing sunglasses and like a gross mustache which i already have so that's perfect um i don't know that seems like the, the the idea um is it any good no will i actually deliver on it probably not What's your thoughts? I've just like dumped a bunch it, of things. It's it's a it's a very dangerous slippery slope. How so? Because what will happen is you'll find one that you'll really like, and then I'll have to fucking hear about it every week. <laughs> you won't stop playing it. <laughs> but that would be the benefit, though, right? Like if, if we're doing supplement, if I'm doing supplementary I, I videos think, I for think, it, I actually think it's cool. I actually think it's really cool, and I think it would be right up your wheelhouse too, because yeah. you do play a lot of simulation games. That's true. Um, they generally speaking don't get a lot of spotlight because mm. they suck. Because they are they they're all fucking janky. Like they are all they, janky. They, they they're generally all janky, and they do fit a very small niche. Mm. Like I'm not into them. Not that I'm a small niche, but you know, yeah. they're they're not my wheelhouse. Um, I don't even like the fucking Sims. I, th- I think my my only um, foray into a simulation game was I did bus driver simulator once that mm. fucking sucked. I blew up my bus in the car park before I could get out. Well, see, my- that's the thing because like there are certain ones that aren't of my interest, and I want to I want I want to play them for funsies. Like lawnmower simulator sounds like asshole. I don't oh, mind. I- Actually, that's a lie. I played the fucking shit out of power wash simulator. Yeah, and then power wash simulator is the same thing. Like, but like having played that for a little sample semi recently my son fell in love with it um his mum fell in love with it she, it, it tickled her like fucking asd brain like bang on and she's like this is the best thing fucking i've ever experienced <laughs> well like for me like i have too much adhd to be like i can't do this because it is so meticulous that it's like it's all fucking little shit there's a fucking little bit of dirt right there and like watching my son do it like if i've ever ever 
ever had to think about like, does my son have ADHD? Watching him play this fucking game, clear as day. Because he's like, I'm gonna clean this fence. I'm bored of this fence. What's over here? Oh, I'm done with that. What's over here? And then you zoom out and like, there was just patches of fucking clean everywhere. And he's like, uh, I'm finished with the fence. I'm like, turn around. He's like, and there's a whole other rest of the fence. He's like, damn it. <laughs> so yeah. And look, having played a lot of supermarket simulator as well, which is weird because I fucking hated working retail, but the game rules, um, you know, that cooking simulator, I can't cook for shit, but maybe the game would inspire me to think of recipes. Like, and the, you know, the other one is like, as you mentioned, like bus driver simulator or Euro truck or whatever. I don't get cars. Fucking, I don't, they just, whatever reason, I do not understand them. But, part of me wants to play like car mechanic simulator and then maybe i'll fucking learn how cars work so next time my car makes a weird noise i'm not gonna go i think i need to get a new car and then realize <laughs> i probably should just clean the brakes you dickhead like this is this might have an or, education or what will happen is you'll be like i really 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 should get a new car <laughs> yeah yeah now that i understand how cars work i look under the hood and go that's not good you know, and then PC building simulator was a ton of fun too, which helped me, you know, help me sort of understand PCs a bit more. Like, so I'm kind of thinking about it in, in a way of like a fun way to educate myself on something else. Right. And I guess, you know, it is kind of, they, all, they are all just spreadsheets, the game. And that always seems fun to me. I don't know. Do it. So, um, yeah. I might just bank a bunch of records and then, and then see how I go. Might do that. But until then, Max, let's get in the section we call Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Well, everybody, it's a new month, which means new PlayStation Essential titles. And this month, we have Immortals of Avium, PS5, Minecraft Legends, PS4, PS5, and Skull the Hero Slayer on PS4. What a shit month. Absolutely I mean, garbage. Was, Immortals was good, but yeah. the other I mean, in, in terms of, like, big punch and impact, it de definitely doesn't have that. However... Uh, I think Immortals of Avium was incredibly fine. Like, it was a great example of a 7, 7.5 out of 10. And mm. I really enjoyed it. I saw credits on it. You know, as we know, me, me getting credits, very difficult because of my ADHD. And just I just get distracted. Um, but seeing it through, I really liked the magical weapon system, you know, with, like, the various colors meaning various things. I uh, had, like, intric intri it was kind of like that movement based of like doom. So you're always mm. kind of in motion. Awesome. Um, other than that, yeah, like I think it's worth checking out. That's a shame that, you know, it didn't get the love it, des it sort of deserved at the time because, you know, then Avalanche had to like lay off half their fucking people. Um, but this is a good way for them to at least get some cash, I guess. Not pay the people because they're all been let go already. But um, yeah, Minecraft Legends was always on the list because my son likes Minecraft, but it, it looked like not Minecraft. Is it because Minecraft Dungeons is something else? Correct. What the what the fuck's this then? Minecraft Legends is like a uh, what was it? It was like a um, kind of like Diablo as opposed to Dungeons being a like an endless dungeon crawl. That's what Dungeons was. Dungeons was Diablo. Yeah, I think Legends is kind of the same from memory. I played it like once. And I went, this sucks. <laughs> Positive, big big time review on uh, on Minecraft Legends there from Max. Yeah, yeah. So remember the logo was like all blue and purpley compared to the dungeons red. You know the fucking dungeons. No, just tell me what you are, you piece of shit. It doesn't know. It can't say. Yeah, there's like an overworld. It is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just poo. The answer is just poo. There's a fucking single player campaign and there's a co-op competitive multiplayer fucking mode. All right, that's cool. That pick. doesn't sound up my, up my alley. Here we go. Premise. Minecraft Legends is set in the Minecraft overworld, which has been invaded by piglins from the nether. Canonically, fuck off, canonically, the events of the game are framed as a legend that has been passed down through generations of villagers in response to the event. Oh, hero oh, oh yeah. No, he gives a shit. Okay. Fuck off. <laughs> no, fuck that game. Uh, Skull. Oh, yeah, Skull, I assume, is like Viking esque. The name um, like Skull. I'll actually look kind of cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a 2D side scroller hack and slash. Sick. All right. Fucking party. It's a uh, roguelike action platformer. Yeah. There oh, you go. that's a max game. I've never heard one. Side scroll and hack and slash. 
converts to, converts to roguelike action adventure. <laughs> All right, so uh, this this I spotted on my I was just I was dicking about in PlayStation Stars this week. This right? is cool. Um, because I was like, oh, I haven't looked at what's happening in the stars as of late. Go in there, and there's a bunch of cool little trinkets. I'm like, oh, oh just dude, I I sorry to cut you off, but I did the same thing as you, and it turns out I almost have a seventy dollar gift card. From hey, my shit! I should actually look at how many how many coins I got. That's that'd be so cool. many fucking coins. So I could buy. Gift. I've got and I don't know how. I could buy Cafe Owner Simulator. This could feed my yeah. simulator habit, Max. Did we ever sign uh, um, the Pop Seer account? The Pop Seer account up I, to don't think, I don't think we did. Probably yeah. should. Actually, uh, uh, no, no, don't get distracted, Ryan. We'll check that later. We'll check that later. We're gonna yeah, see sorry, my fault. That's my, that's my bad. Uh, <laughs> no, I've got to find out. But uh, yeah, so one of the things, there was a game that was like, uh, one of the things. Uh, was like, hey, play fucking these games. One of them was Last of Us Part 2. I'm like, oh, I still have that installed. Boom, I'll open it. And I opened it. And then my phone went, hey, do you want to check out this thing? It's called Law. I'm like, what the fuck is Law? But that's what I'll tell you. So Sony's introducing in its beta form a new section within the PlayStation app called the Law, which will sort of turn that PlayStation app into a second style screen experience containing things like diary entries, character profiles, and cutscenes as you come across them in your game. Currently, the functional functionality is only within The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, which is coincidentally that's the one I booted up, but presumably this will be something that expands to other games in the future. It has been tested to see how it works at this very moment, and it is this weird, unusual extra feature that could potentially be useful down the line. When the when the app is open, a note in the game is found, and once it's put in the backpack within Last of Us, it quickly becomes available within the app. With a screenshot from the game and the writing in plain text below, uh, and additionally, a characters tab shows us each person present within a cutscene that was playing. So think kind of like IMDb's or, or Amazon's where you can pause it and you can pull up IMDb and see which actors are in a particular scene. Once that cutscene is over, it could then be viewed via the app as well if you wanted to watch it again. Now, for particular games where you need information within cutscenes or something like Alone in the Dark where it's beneficial to go look through all your memos, this kind of rules. Mm. But compare it to like... The other thing that PlayStation brought in with the PS5 at launch uh, was the activities tabs or the things that would show you like, hey, you're having trouble with this trophy. If supported, we can show you how to get it. Or it'll count, you know, you, you got to collect 50 things. It tells you you've collected 35. Like those little like quality of life improvements are biggies. And I think this is one of them. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead to the next story because it kind of plays into what you've just brought up. Sweet. So, a future PlayStation 5 update has been revealed in which the game help section of the system interface will be significantly expanded upon. The new community game help is exactly what it sounds like. Players will be able to reference gameplay clips from other users when they're stuck on a certain in-game objective, challenge, or trophies. Currently, select titles on PlayStation 5 offer developer-created hints, which can be viewed by bringing up the cards interface. It's unclear how popular this help system actually is, but we do know that a lot of games don't support it and that you need to be a PlayStation Plus subscriber to see it anyway. The community game hub will add user-created videos, which will, which will apparently be, quote, moderated before made public. Mm. Sony says the community clips will be available to everyone to see, even if they don't subscribe to PlayStation Plus, but again, only select games will support this new effort. How do you take part? According to Sony, the whole thing's automatic. Quote, your PS5 will automatically capture a video when you complete a certain activity in the game. It then gets uploaded in the background, stripped of any voice recordings, approved and made free for use to all. You'll also be able to keep track of clips that have been successfully published. Uh, it is worth noting that you have to opt into this before Sony starts cherry picking your gameplay clips. Go to game captures, broadcast, all that crap, and turn it on. But just hit the participate button to opt into the program. So very similar to Stars, which was opt in as well. Yeah. Sony does explain this option will appear, apparently appear, quote, in the coming months. So when I first heard about this, I'm like, oh, great. People are going to fucking upload troll videos all the time. But no, it's just if you pop a trophy, it's just going to have recorded your last five minutes of gameplay automatically like the game, like the system does anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to strip all the audio from it. If you're in a group or in a, in a party chat, it's going to strip all your audio and upload it in secret. Yeah. Which is cool. I like it. 
Look, it's a, yeah, my initial concern is very similar to yourself in terms of like, how is this moderated? How is this controlled? And I assume it's all AI driven. Hmm. Pardon me, because if it's one of those things where you're like, your trophy ping will get uploaded. Cool. But I guess within within those circumstances, if, if they're tailored circumstances where it's like, this is for this, that's for that. It's very difficult to troll a trophy ping. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like it's collect 90, collect 50 things. And then you just ping it when you click the 51. You can't be like, you know, here's upskirt of Nia. Oh, except for the, that one trophy that is exactly that. Um, you know, it is, it, you, you, it has the ability to not be that bullshit thing. And especially mm. when you can remove the, the commentary or any voice or anything. So you can't be like, hey, how do I get this trophy? There's a bunch of N words being yelled at you. Like, you know, which is just the internet. So thankfully those things are reduced and i this is back to what i said before around when the game launched at the help whatever where the developers had to show you they had to make the content for it to appear on the trophy list to tell, help you get it mm. where because you know as said this weekend my son and i got all the trophies for gang beasts for no reason right some of them we had to Google because it wasn't clearly explained on how to do it. Where here, I could just, without even having to leave my PlayStation, it's like, bing, oh, there's a community video of showing me how someone did that. Sick, perfect, love it. Yeah. Big win. Absolute big win. Uh, and it turns out I have like 10,000 uh, stars points. 10,419. Nice. So what's, what's that? 7,500 is a $30 credit. So, yeah, like 38-ish dollars in credits. Woo. Woo. And uh, Cafe Owner Simulator is 30 bucks. Just saying. Woo. Get excited for me. Um, but, yeah, once, look, once again, yes, yes, uh, jump into stars occasionally. Have a little look. This week, Max, I saw the be-all and end-all of fucking PlayStation Stars collectibles. Kratos is wank. It wasn't Kratos is wank, but goddamn, if it was, I would have, I would have got that shit immediately. You know, like occasionally there's really cool ones. There was one like, hey, here's you know the Leviathan axe from God of War. Here is you know the fucking Raptor thingies from uh, Horizon. Here's just Miles Morales. Here's the fucking Venom canister. Uh, the boss sword from Cla from Final Fantasy. Yeah, you know, here's a PlayStation Portal. Just play a game. Here's a portal. That's dope. Here's a fucking thingy. Um, This week, I had the second I saw it, I went, I have to do whatever is needed to get this collectible because it's going to sit on my little collectible shelf with absolute pride. It's a little bobblehead of Jim Ryan, and it's called a nod to Jim Ryan because this week we saw the end of Jim Ryan, the former head of PlayStation Worldwide Studios, crying Jim Ryan as we, as he was affectionately named uh, during the uh, the ABK mergers. Was it, sorry? <laughs> he cried one more time. <laughs> yeah, and he cried one more time as he left. Uh, he probably cried some happy tears when he saw himself as a PlayStation Stars collectible, because I know why I did. But as it writes here, Friday, which I'm assuming the Friday that just left, marks the end of Jim Ryan's 30-year tenure at Sony Interactive Entertainment. Rest in peace. Having climbed the ladder of the company all the way to the top, his five-year stint as CEO of Worldwide Studios has now drawn to a close. With Hiroki Totoki temporary... Oh, no, my apologies. He's CEO of PlayStation. Head of Worldwide Studios was Herm is Herman Holst. Um, with Hiroki Totoki... Uh, literature club temporarily taking over until a permanent replacement is found speaking on the latest official PlayStation podcast so you know it's good shit uh <laughs> ryan has one last interview with hard-hitting questions from a PlayStation podcast doubt it uh in which he comments on the platform's evolution his career and his thoughts on the ps3 original boomerang controller Perhaps the most interesting, though, are his thoughts on how PlayStation is doing as he leaves the office behind. It's fucked, he says, end quote. No. Uh, <laughs> he appears... <laughs> he goes, who fucking cares? The no, retro just games just are dumb. No, no, not my problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not my monkey, not my problem, whatever the expression is. He appears very proud of what's being achieved with PS5 so far. Quote, I'd say that right now, we're at the top of our game. 
PlayStation 5 is well on track to be our most successful console ever across multiple vectors. I think the games and gaming experiences you see on PS5, led by PlayStation Studios, are the best that we've ever seen. End quote. He continues commenting on the quality of PlayStation Studios' output as well as its uh, quantity, sorry, as well as, as well as its quality. Quote, the number of games we've published so far on PS5 at this point in the cycle way exceeds anything that we've ever done before. And with all the investment that we've put into the studios and the acquisitions that we've made, that is only going to accelerate and snowball. We sit in a position of strength and I think the future is bright, he concludes. Ryan also says the thing that thing sorry Ryan also says the thing he's quote happiest about leaving behind end quote is a quote really strong leadership team of excellent individuals end quote so as far as he's concerned he's leaving PlayStation in safe hands going forward Max now's the time like like any good uh, in memoriam what are some of your the, the 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 memories that you have of Jim Ryan that sit to sit close to your heart. Honestly, not many. <laughs> Mine was when um, just before they launched PlayStation Plus, uh, its tiered versions, um, premium with its big selling point of retro games. He went on the record and said, "Who the essentially who the fuck wants to play old games?" Um, it's about Ridge Racer, and then they sold a service that was like, "Hey, you want to play old games?" It was rad. It was so good. Um, the other time is every photo of him holding a controller weird, like this or like this, because that's how you hold controllers. Apparently if you're Jim Ryan, um, how mad would it have been if he came out and Jim Ryan was a fucking claw man? (laughs) (laughs) Um, my favorite things he's ever done was all the times that he was asked about what's his favorite game. Um, and it's always whatever the game was about to come out because he clearly didn't play games and you know what like in hindsight that's okay right like you know he's a businessman he's there to be a businessman do business things and he did do business things like to his credit he fought really fucking hard for that abk shit right like was it the right decision no but he stalled it and he caused there to be amendments and you know little little changes and you know he he did what he needed to do as ceo he did he did do his job well yeah and you know and and then on top of that having to uh lead the ship during a worldwide pandemic yet he still managed to release the ps5 deliver it in good in good stead and support it you know relatively well is he a great personality no i don't think he has one but you know, it, it did always make me chuckle when, when we would come out for state of plays, whatever, and, and it was like looking at this very interactive piece of cardboard. Uh, he, like, he's no Sean Layden. I love Sean Layden. His weird stance, his weird body shape, his weird delivery, his fucking love for Vibribbon. You know, like all those little things that I, that, I, that I miss and love. But, you know, he too spoke out of both sides of his mouth, very similar to, to you know, Phil Spencer. So but, how do you? Th- Sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish your train of thought. I was gonna there. say yeah, but I'm, I am curious to see what the future holds. Like I said, we got Hiroki Totoki, um, you know, former Is Sony. Uh, not former. He's still currently the C- CFO. My apologies. The, still Sony. currently the CFO of of Sony as he, a whole. He's also, he's also just taking on the role of CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. So, yeah. Like, so how much will this man do as a C level? Yeah, which may, yeah, it, it makes me think a couple things now. You know, from a speculative standpoint, like who's going to replace him? Who's going to come in as the new CEO of PlayStation? Like, is it going to be someone that we know? Is it going to be a creative? Is it going to be a business person? We, we don't really know. Um, like, is Herman Holst going to step up from head of Worldwide and then someone from Gorilla's is going to come in behind him, I assume? Like, or is Neil going to become head of Worldwide Studios? Like, wouldn't that be cool? Like, Neil Druckmann, that'd be rad. I don't think that's what he wants to do. I think he's more business-minded, but... Um, you know, and, I, and and then in that same thought process with the with the loss of like Connie Booth semi recently, um, and and Jim Ryan going out in a rel- relatively similar time, or he's going into retirement, like it does beg the question: Was he asked to go to leave, or was he making his own choice? Because what we're seeing now is a, a company that is going 
back on everything they said in terms of you know x amount of live service games like this is the plan moving forward and that was jim jim ryan's plan as ceo um and then you know he goes into retirement and then suddenly it all changes it's curious yeah yeah it'll be interesting so do so I, I clearly I care more <laughs> and just in terms of, of you and I, I mean, I mean that in terms of not like, as in, I seem to have a focus on like the behind of PlayStation a little bit more than yourself in some ways. And that's fine. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things though. Like, obviously the, the concern here is, um, well, it's not, it's not a concern. So the issue is that currently the person who has stepped up to take, to fill Jim Ryan's shoes is the CFO of the entirety of the company. Hmm. So he's obviously very... Yeah, not of, the, the, not of the division. Yeah, of the, the company. Entire, like the entire The corporation. Company. What I'm more interested in is not where they're going to go from here and who's going to fill in, but how long uh, Totoki will be on as interim CEO. And it's a, and you absolutely bang on because it, as you mentioned, like what would if if because someone can be a C, two two spots in a in a C suite, like the thing is, well, it's not just that. It's like like I'm gonna re- use a really fucking bad analogy here, but look at it in like politics. So well, well, well hang already... on, you you can't do that because there was that one time that Scott Morrison Scott Morrison was the head of like eighteen departments, and he did it just fine. He was he he spent most of his time in Hawaii, so. <laughs> more of the like when when the new party come in they kind of play catch up from the four year, the, the previous four years that the other party was yeah the charge. first year or and a half so, is, yeah. like it, it's not like if if let's say the next fucking eight months for playstation are absolute bangers it's not really to toki's win it's still jim Absolutely. ryan's win from him coming in like it, we're not going to see the um the ripple effect from this happen for a while mm. And like, obviously, you know, Jim Ryan did come out and he's like, we're going to do fucking live service games. They had 16 in the wheelhouse. I think eight of them have been canned so far. None of them have come out. Except for um, Helldivers, I guess. Yeah, I guess Helldivers kind of live service, isn't it? It's absolutely a live service. And an it's, awesome 100%, it's like 110% live service. Uh, <laughs> like, it's sort of, except for all of it. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> are they going to... From now that Jim Ryan's out, are they going to make just do a fucking hard handbrake and be like, "We're not doing this anymore," and then mm. all of them get canned? Um, because we don't know anything that Sony's doing at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so it's hard to it's it's hard to say. And it's a what's, co- what's, sorry, go ahead. It's it's hard to say where they're going to go from here because obviously they don't want like I don't know if. Totoki wants to be in this role for a prolonged period of time because obviously he's just interim CEO and he's obviously got bigger fish to fry as a, a, a C-suite of the entirety of the company as opposed mm. to just one subdivision. Um, and you would imagine that that job takes time and effort and all that stuff as mm. as well as what he's doing here. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see, one, how quickly the turnaround is, two, if they do go for another business, business-minded business person like Jim Ryan or if they do go that creative suite to have someone who not only kind of has that passion for gaming itself and wants to see it progress and evolve into a greater medium as opposed to just fucking bigger numbers on a spreadsheet. But yeah. Mm. And I get, and, and I think that you absolutely bang on there because when you ha- you've got a CFO running the place, right? Yes. Um, and that, that does dictate the path that they're going to take. You know, yeah. because that's just how they're. That's just how that individual is minded. Now, granted, everything isn't one person; it is a collective of individuals coming together. However, you still have that one, the figurehead, right? It's the one person that kind of gives it the all. And and if we once again going back to Sean Layden, a creative individual who started in game development that got to that position, his focus was very much on, and we see it now in his comments out since leaving head of Worldwide Studios. Um, you know, we see him talk about the creative of and the, and how the the mismatch between creative and business, especially in, in, in when you're dealing with art as a commodity. Mm. So to then have yeah Jim Ryan come in, someone who's worked as in you know a particular side, and he's a business minded guy, and you know, in once again in hindsight, looking at what he's had to face, he the best person for it. 
mm. but looking forward and now we're we're essentially in this interesting gaming bubble that may or may not burst at any moment you know we got layoffs everywhere shit you know people being acquired and sold and all these things happening everywhere like do you want a creative in that space or do you want the someone that's fiscally aware and sort of can mm. understand the the dollars which is helpful to have Totoki in there and i once again and that that coincides with that thought process of if they have been funding all these live service games many of them being canned that's a lot of sinking money so it makes sense to have a, a you know a financially minded person come in and like go the fuck which i think is kind of but then it begs the question of why did the financially minded person originally put them in motion uh well no the, they just so they just that, look at the end result the going, difference well, this, there this game will make us money forever as opposed to a one-off purchase the difference there would have been the cfo of uh sony as a whole kind of just looks at everything where the financial decision would have been made within worldwide studios itself i uh, know sorry i kind of meant like the the business mind of person made the decision to begin with and now we've got oh, another business yeah, yeah. model which, which once again which is equating to Jim Ryan being a, like a like a CFO type of person okay it was just more that they're both businessmen not creative men so I thought you meant in terms of Totoki no, coming no, no, sorry, in that, that was that was my poor no that's absolutely yeah, no, that's absolutely on me for misunderstanding so I apologize <clears throat> um but yeah no that's a very good point right like he was reading the tea leaves at the time and went this is what the future should be um little did everyone realize the games as a service only work if you support it properly and give it the money and time it deserves and it, and it kind of has to really be a banger it does like it has to be better than the other live service games because you can only really play one of them <laughs> yeah and you know to expand on that like we look at the the gaming market as, as a whole Which and I, sorry you know, that's right we you know we, we notice how like when it comes to console sales the numbers always around the same like it, it never really, it never really tops out about two hundred million consoles sold, right? It's not like it was 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. It's not exponentially growing or consistently yeah. growing. So you, if you've got a similarly based number of people buying consoles, and you have more and more games that demand more and more time, that market is is tougher and tougher, right? So like to your point, as you said, like you only have so much time in your week that's what always baffled me because he came out where he's like you know our studios are doing 16 live service games i'm like why are you why are you fucking cutting your own lunch yeah do three three done boom three Crazy. different genres nailed it you know, they're all fighting over each other's time like why would you that that's that like that seemed crazy to me at the time yeah but you know what do i know well maybe more because you didn't maybe maybe get fired um it's it, it, it's a uh, it's a tough one am i sad to see him go no because that would be mean and i i do you know he put his time 30 years at one company is fucking insane you don't i think, see I think you meant i think you meant to say yes are you sad to say yes because it would be mean otherwise yeah sorry i mean the other way mike yeah am i sad to see him go yes i am but that sucks yeah. for everyone anyone losing their job right that's yeah, for sure but um you know it's new blood it changes i uh, do wonder you know in once again with the back to back to why the fuck am i still talking with you know the transition from from even you know sean layden um as ceo um you know and then into into jim like there was a tonal shift in playstation as a whole i mean the other big thing is now also it's going to be run by an easterner not a westerner exactly right so, so like that's also going to shift the dynamics a little bit yeah, we went from a very personality driven community focused company with playstation and the ps3 to ps4 to then go to we don't say shit from ps4 to ps5 within jim ryan's tenure right so what is this next shift like how is you know playstation have, have, have done a lot of things to really focus themselves as the, the boutique the apple of console gaming right like how where do they take that now like yeah, it's it's interesting space but um you know that's, that's speaking of playstation as we do all the time sometimes xbox gets involved in those conversations 
<laughs> yes. So, apparently, Xbox will release the majority, quote, of its tentpole first-party titles on PlayStation 5 in the future. That's its multi-format strategy gathers pace. Earlier in the year, they, uh, they spoke at a strategic business meeting where it announced four console-exclusive titles, including Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves, would launch on Sony's format. While it's not short of confirming other rumored releases, it did insinuate that this was simply the start of a new philosophy for Xbox. According to GamesIndustry.biz's well-connected Christopher Dring, there's much more to come. Quote, From what I understand, the majority of Xbox's first-party games will be coming to PS5 at some point, assuming it progresses as Xbox believes it probably will. He said on a podcast, Quote, I think Xbox is in real trouble as a hardware manufacturer, and that was the thing that came out of GDC for me, end quote. In the wake of flatlining hardware sales in Europe, during explained that some publishers are pondering whether to even continue supporting the Xbox console. Quote, you can follow our monthly coverage in the games market, and you can see that Xbox sales are falling, and it's been falling all throughout last year, and it's falling even harder this year, he noted. The phrase one major company who released a big game last year said was, quote, I don't know why we bothered supporting it, end quote. Dream quoted the other high-level executives who noted a lot of work goes into creating multiple versions of Xbox games, so they scale across both the series of the X's and the S's hardware profiles, he explained. Quote, you've got third-party publishers going, we're putting in a lot of effort for trying to create a Series S version and an X version of a game when, to be honest with you, for us, the market is PC and PS5. End quote. Look, it's it's no surprise, right? Because and... realistically, they're not making three copies of the game. They're making five copies of the game and three of them are on Xbox. Correct. And, and which, which coincidentally ties into the next story, is... Game, and it's Game Pass, right? Like yeah. all this effort, all this time, it goes over to Microsoft and people don't buy games there anymore. Like, pardon me, Game Pass for a customer, I've said this the whole time, is exceptional, exceptional value for the customer, but it is detrimental to the industry. It is detrimental to the development teams, to the business side of it, right? Because it is fiscally impossible to maintain long term and that is why we're seeing these games aren't coming across out of desire they're coming out of across out of necessity right because mm -hmm. they have to right in the same way that we saw interesting things this week i just looked ahead it's not in the news with uh ilphonic the, the team behind predator hunting grounds like they have announced that you know the game is now coming to to, to xbox this week uh, and I didn't like, even see anything about it. Yeah, and everyone that. was like, oh, fucking PlayStation releasing games on Xbox. Ooh. No, because you know why? Because PlayStation, Sony gave up the publishing rights to the game. It is now published by Ilphonic. It is no longer a PlayStation published game. Therefore, they can do whatever they want with it. In the same way they did that with Remedy. Where, sorry, not PlayStation particularly, but with, you know, with, uh, Alan, uh, sorry, Microsoft did with Remedy when they went, you can have Alan Wake. And they went, fuck yeah. And what did they do? Instantly put it everywhere else. Right? Mm-hmm. Same thing, same principle. So like that happening is not indicative of PlayStation doing the similar approach because they don't have to, right? They don't have to put them on Xbox because why the fuck would they? The only thing they have to put over there is MLB because a couple of years ago, we talked about it here on the show, MLB went, you release it on, on other platforms or you no longer make the game. We have the rights, we will pull those rights. And, and Sony San Diego make a stack of coin off MLB, they do it right so hence why mlb is on game pass however where's the where, where do people buy it the most still so on fucking xbox still on playstation so this is coming out of necessity this is microsoft going no one bought these games and no one's going to buy these games because it's on game pass let's put it on playstation charge it as a, a slightly cheaper than release price and they'll, they'll just fucking eat it up Mm. which they did you look like you know sea of thieves yeah, sea of Thieves was the fucking most wishlisted game on PlayStation. yeah most pre no, not wishlisted most pre-ordered people have paid money pre-ordered mm. that game so they're already doing exactly what they wanted to which is make more cash which is not a bad thing once again it is the business of this business the industry right mm. but it's just this 
you know, idea of they're doing it as this goodwill gesture or whatever. No, it's because there's no fucking money in Game Pass. And that brings us into this next this next piece, which is a little bit down. So I'm skipping some stuff. We'll come back. I I don't know why I didn't fucking put this under there. That's all right. So it looks as though uh, the plump pockets of uh, the big corporations like Epic uh, and Microsoft are beginning to empty. And it's putting some smaller studios in an awkward position. After offering funds in exchange for exclusivity or availability on Game Pass, many indie devs have come to rely on those deals to finance their projects. Huh funny that however it seems those deals are becoming harder to lock down and they're worth less than they ever have been speaking in interview to gdc casey yano co-founder of slay the spire studio mega crit says he's heard the same story over and over quote i talked to at least five small teams like 35 members and under during gdc and they're like cuts 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 funding cancelled talks that were going on for a year cancelled he said it sounds like it's shit we're definitely very privileged to be able to to be able to be self-funded otherwise it'd be a very very uh, sorry i'd be otherwise i'd be very very scared right now end quote chris borasa co-founder of red hook studios the team behind darkest dungeon pointed out that microsoft's deals for putting a game on game pass have quote come down in scope end quote and that it's a similar story with epic and the epic game store previously these deals have allowed some teams to break even on their games before they've even been released offering a lot of security even if sales were lower than expected now this is becoming a less and less reliable safety net as the purse strings are tightening it is unfortunate however if not surprising a situation looking at game pass it's always pushed for day one releases and microsoft's bottomless coffers have bankrolled countless small titles to ensure they're part of the package however as subscriber numbers plateau plateau sorry, sorry plateau and growth slows we're not surprised that phil spencer and the team are having to be a little more conservative You have to assume this also applies to Sony and PS Plus, as they'll also be offering deals to various teams to get them onto the extra catalog. While there have been more rare examples, sorry, some some rare examples of day one releases, things like Sea of Stars or uh, uh, what's that cat game? Foam Stars. Foam Stars. Stray. Stray. Uh, Sony's decision to largely sidestep this perk of Game Pass may provide uh, may prove to be smarter in the long term. And I completely agree. So, so at GDC, Epic changed the way they do their deals. Uh, so they announced. So they have a they have one of the best revenue splits in the business of I think it's eighty eight to twelve. Uh, Steam's is seventy thirty. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like eighty plus or something for Epic. Yeah. So insane. yeah, I think I think it's I think it's I think it's eighty eight twelve. Um, but moving forward, they're like, hey, for the if you give us exclusivity for the first six months. 100% revenue is yours. And then after that mm. six month period, we'll go back to the 88 12 split. Yeah. So you've got six months to make as much money as you as humanly possible. And then we'll start taking a cut. The thing about this, right? And the, the interesting part about this as a, as a concept, and like it is reinforcing a speculation that most people have had around game pass is that it's it's incorrectly throwing out so it's sorry it's incorrectly balancing the 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 back end the finances of the industry right where very similar to apple and the iphone with that race to the bottom how no one buys a game that's over three bucks hey you know like they they apple by design fucking broke the mobile gaming market to such a point that it can never recover game pass is doing the same thing that you know and actually all streaming services have done it if i'm gonna be honest all streaming services have done it in that they they have artificially inflated the revenue of of these games because as it says right there these games are being uh, making money before they even release because microsoft have gone here's an x amount of, amount of money probably more money than you would make come be with us exclusivity and then they'll and they get the exclusive window and then a couple months later or a year later they drop on other platforms and then they get they make hot ideally make some money there too if the game is good and it has that great tail pardon me the people then don't you, you like you know didn't play it over here now want to go play it six months later when that hype is gone 
Mm. They have yeah devalued games as a collective by saying, you know what, games aren't worth buying day one. Get them on Game Pass. They're not worth paying that seventy bucks, that a hundred bucks Australian. You just wait. You just get on Game Pass. Therefore, studios will spend less. They will pump those motherfuckers with microtransaction to make up that make up the deficit. It is it is irre- has the potential to irreparably damage this industry at large. And now it's, we're seeing it the other way. Because we're the next story we're about to go into is the overvaluation of studios. We're seeing overvaluation of studios, overvaluation of games, and to what I said before, the idea is this is this another gaming bubble that's about to burst? Fuck yes it is. And it's about to kick dick so hard so hard mm. and we should all be incredibly concerned so as you alluded to take two has announced its plans to acquire gearbox entertainment from the embracer group in a deal reported to be worth 460 million dollars the buyout makes logical sense as gearbox entertainment will operate under the framework of 2k games which has long Perfect. been the publisher of the popular borderlands series anyway <clears throat> and it will be led by founder randy pritchford Gearbox Entertainment says it currently has six projects in the works, including five sequels, two of which belong to the Borderlands and Homeworld franchises. The developer will retain IP ownership of the two previously mentioned franchises, as well as Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and Duke Nukem. To add complication, however, Embracer Group will continue to control Gearbox's publishing San Francisco, which will be renamed and will hold onto the publishing rights for titles like Hyper Light Drifter. Quote, joining forces with Take-Two Interactive and 2K will help Gearbox ascend to our next level, said a presumably minted Randy Pritchford. Take-Two and 2K have demonstrated repeatedly that their commitment to our engine of generating creativity, happiness, and profit. We set the bar for interactive entertainment and achieved remarkable results with groundbreaking, record-setting games when we work together at arm's length as partners. I'm incredibly excited about what we can accomplish now that we are fully aligned as one. Uh, do you want me to just cover the next story. Yeah, well. just keep going. So less than a day after the news that Take-Two Interactive would acquire Borderlands developer Gearbox Entertainment from Embracer Group, layoffs have already begun. In the hours since former hmm. Gearbox employees were made redundant, they've taken to Twitter, and while the total number of staff impacted remains hard to determine, it sounds significant. Insider Gaming has reached out to Gearbox and, and new parent Take-Two Interact- Interactive for comment. But in the meantime, blindsided staff are telling the story for them. Former PR manager Jennifer Locke posted, quote, Along with countless others, I've just been informed I've been laid off at Gearbox. Senior user research investigator Jules Verne said, I just lost my job. Chris Harada, director of online engagement, wrote on LinkedIn, After three incredible years at Gearbox, my journey with the company has, inclu- has concluded. Embracer Group sold the Texas-based company for just $460 million, less than half of what it paid for Gearbox back in 2021, shilling out some $1.3 billion then to acquire the studio in the first place. That's an approximate loss of $840 million in just over two years, illustrating quite well the ridiculous state of the video game industry. Now, to be fair, not that it, it, not that it makes any difference or it sucks for those people any less, but most of the people that lost their jobs were all in PR, and obviously take to have their own PR teams and they're like, we're not going to, we don't need to double dip here. Yeah, absolutely. And, like and that's that, very and similar to, like more... yeah, very similar to what happened with the ABK stuff, right? Like, don't get me wrong. It still sucks for those Fuck people who had jobs and they don't. But at the same time, I understand from a business perspective that they're not going to pay two people to do the same job when mm. they already have employees that will do it. Doesn't make it any less shitty or any less egregious, but I understand. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It is. It's tough, and I like from where I'm sitting, and and as this as this coincides with what I was saying before, right? The the overinflated value, where the Embracer Group just had fucking bags of money swinging their dicks around. There is no, no fucking absolute no reason that Gearbox is worth one point three billion dollars, and we saw that today, eight hundred and forty million dollars lost. Well, it's, it's and this is the thing, and that is why they were let go because at no point were they ever worth that much money, right? But so the look, at it, what they, the look at what they kept of Gearbox, which was their publishing arm, yeah, which is what Embracer was buying a lot of with publishers, yeah, because they want fucking IP. Company. That's what they want, yeah. Right? So and that's the thing. So they kept part of it. They got rid of the development team because they didn't fucking you, you know, Borderlands go make that somewhere else, and they made it with two, and they're going to make it with two K and take two. Perfect pickup, by the way. Absolutely, they that should have been they should have been where they lived before all this. Just saying, but 
this is a concern so the reason embracer would have let them go is because the what the, the idea would have been we're going to buy you for 1.3 billion you are going to recoup that amount in a window of time but they can't because clearly they're not worth that they were worth 460 million this entire goddamn time right yeah so the expectation on them to deliver that is unmanaged had been unmanageable all the fucking time and we're seeing this all that's all across the space max there are studios that are all been bought up by embracer that are being fucking dropped and laid off and cancelled and pulled apart and it's bad it's real bad like i don't like i don't want to be big cynical fucking dude about it but it's bad the future is not good for gaming Am I, am I in a like freak uh, am I in like a freaking out sort of situation or am I looking too hard like what's what's the dealio so, sorry I got sidetracked by one of Padge's posts on Twitter um no look it's I <laughs> I think you're right I think I think this gaming bubble that's gonna pop is gonna pop soon it's mm. gonna be a fucking shit show yeah of craziness and yeah um, and it's this tough circumstance where like you know we want this to be a good space lots of people making games lots of people being sold uh like you know lots of things being sold and picked up and per- like fuck yeah woo brent love it uh yeah i don't know i don't know i'm sitting yeah. here, I'm, I'm i feel in this weird position where i'm it, sitting it here sounds pointing- like it sounds like all the fingers of the monkey paw are almost down and we're gonna be fucked soon yeah like i do we it's gonna be as gnarly as the crash of the 80s maybe maybe more you know it's yeah it's uh it's it's concerning times max concerning times uh i think that's like all the news parts that is that's all the news parts we got some quick bitties let's and get... i actually have an upcoming titles list for yeah, you all this week. yeah well let's get into them quick bitties only got a couple this week max uh and I, there's one i want to add as well go for it so minecraft is to get is to finally be getting a ps5 native version soon which is good bit late bit late but good uh jo- uh the joker dlc is now available for the suicide squad kill the justice league if for any reason you still have that installed on your console i don't um <laughs> uh inside final fantasy 7 rebirth doco is uh available on youtube now max now that you've rolled credits you're gonna check it out yeah i'm actually pretty interested to see because um, this is one of the rare occasions where a lot of the team was retained after re- uh, after re- remake to make Rebirth. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, speaking good. of like fucking gaming docos, uh, I started I started watching the I Kojima still, one. I still haven't watched the Kojima one. So I went to watch it one night. I'm like, oh no, it's, I have to watch it to fucking subtitles. Yeah, that, that, was, that was my problem too. I was like, oh, this is rad. Oh, I'm going to have to really pay, pay attention to this, aren't I? Fuck um and then i did watch like half of it i'm like this is cool it is kind of just everyone wanking off uh kojima for an hour for 45 minutes that's cool um it's cool to see like the thought process of like death stranding and then sort of seeing how literally his hand is in everything which is cool in that it's like oh rad uh you're a major micromanager which makes sense because as an auteur you know you are the vision this is everything that you have created in your head and you want to see it be delivered so fuck yeah i get that well well done it does it is a giant jerk fest for, for kojima though which which is not a bad thing right good joking good joking uh marvel's rivals was announced it's a 6v6 overwatch style shooter it looks fucking awesome i yeah, not for me but like chill oh did you uh not even remotely close did you play that beta that yet yeah but you didn't send me the information so i didn't know if i could talk about it or not oh we could totally, totally talk, we could totally talk about it um I, uh, shout out to Ben and Emco Australia. I got to play in the closed network test for Sin Duality, their upcoming, uh, mech game. Um, there's a short little enclosed area. I've kind of played the tutorial area. It tells you how to, um, <clears throat> work the mech. Uh, it gives you a short insight into the story. So basically <clears throat> it is set on a world that it has been ravaged by weird moon rain that has essentially killed 90 percent of the population and the 10 percent that were left over like you know what we're gonna fucking build mechs and kill each other so um the best way to explain it and how i played it so far is it's kind of um 
mech warrior, but not as hardcore. <laughs> okay. A little bit more resource gathering to upgrade your mech and stuff like that. It has um, uh, changes in weather patterns. So if it's raining, it's that fucking dank rain that kills you. So you have to stay hidden because the mech suit just fucking deteriorates like a motherfucker in the in the rain. The combat's pretty fun. Um, it's essentially you are in a mech suit, fly around, shoot the people. Um, you can as you as you um, as you partake in the combat, you kind of uh, power up your uh, your um, pilot, and the pilots have special skills depending mm. on what suits they're in. Uh, so the one that I picked uh, essentially just locks onto a bunch of fucking targets at once and just homing missiles the shit out of them. It's great, <laughs> it's like sort of just like big fireworky um, chaos spray. Yeah, um, it's very animated in its um, in its graphic style, uh, so it's a bit more. Um, are we talking kind of like? Is are we talking like the anime of? Let's say, uh, like the Attack on Titan games, or more anime like Persona. It's definitely not like Persona, but okay, um, okay. It's not like that stylized anime. It's kind of like that cartoonish anime to a degree. Okay, so kind um, of like the Naruto games that have come out recently. Like, uh, like most anime games kind of look janky and a bit shitty. Is it kind of so, in that space? <laughs> no, it's it's not that bad. That's it's good. slightly better than what the Naruto games look like, if I'm to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like the DBZ um, games. Yeah, kind of. Ooh, yeah. good, good one. Okay, yeah, like, I can work with, that. Um, work with that. So yeah, it's a lot of you, you go out, you ping the world, and it's like, hey, here's the mana resource. Here's the resources you kind of need to go mine uh, to upgrade all your gear. You go do those, and it's kind of mission structured. And then once you've completed as much as you want to complete, um, you essentially evac back under the earth to safety mm. and then you do your <clears throat> your battle report and you can upgrade and do all that stuff i've only played a very little bit of it um again when i when i got it it was the night that um I, we went into hospital for my daughter so i didn't get to play a ton what a, um, what a shit he's still, what a shit kid. he's still running for another two days so i'll jump into it yeah. um, it was a very short window for, for a closed network test but um this is another one of those games that i saw about four or five set of plays ago. i'm like this looks like me. Yeah. And that's what makes <laughs> it even then, funnier. So and, like the... And then I saw the Bandai Namco thing. I'm like, yeah, there's like 80% of Bandai Namco games are like totally max oh, hands. Absolutely. What My favorite part about emailing them, the the, the PR team here, um, I won't name them just for privacy. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, it's fun because I'm like, hey, Max is really excited for this game because like nine times out of 10, yeah, most Bandai games ain't for me. It's like, yeah. sorry, uh, most Square Enix games aren't really for me like namco games tend to because they're the same pr place here so yeah. my, some namco games get my attention obviously tekken's a big one and i'm fucking shitting my oh eddie gordo but yeah and that's, that's, it, that's what's even really fun about this email is it was like hey this is like a max game and then i read the i looked into it i googled it and did my like, son of a bitch that is exactly a max game <laughs> like holy shit did he nail it absolutely nailed it yeah i had a, I had a blast with it so I'll yeah I'll play it a bit more before the the network text ends. I think it ends like tomorrow or, or on Tuesday for us. We don't have we don't uh, have work. It's a long weekend. No. Nah. So yeah, we'll um we'll give it a bit more of a bell. And, so apologies uh, yeah, to the I team for it. talking about it so late in the episode. I forgot about it until I looked at my phone a second ago and I, I, I yeah, opened I my email and went oh I yeah. Because um, most of the time you send me a whole thing, and this time it's like here's your key, and that's all you're getting. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, normally I give all the information because the information was fuck it, have fun with it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then you asked me, and then I sort of got distracted and wandered off. So like, you know, on me, I guess. Well, I don't want to be the one guy that accidentally says something I'm not supposed to, and then you have to do more editing <laughs> at the end of the night. I barely edit these things. It's all good. But no, I, I played it. It's it's pretty rad. Um, I don't think there's a, a date for it yet. No, I don't think so. I think it's sometime. Um, but yeah, right uh, up my alley. But yeah, so the, the, the last bit, and then back to, now back to quick bits. Um, thank you for the team. It looks, Max clearly loves it. <laughs> so much better than I back end of the show. Save the best or last. That's a good point. Um, slide down and go in there. One little quick bit, uh, that I did hear rumblings of this week. Uh, apparently, if you look over at LinkedIn, uh, day, uh, Days Gone Studio, Sony, oh, uh, yeah, uh, right, yeah. uh, Sony Bend, are uh, actively hiring 
But what is interesting is they are looking for individuals who have experience within live service games and individuals that have that have assisted in a fundament essentially a fundamental change of a studio structure in that sony bend are now they're going to be make they're like like how do we pivot this entire studio to a live service studio because mm. in once again if we go back to discussions we had either early this episode but also in previous episodes around uh like naughty dog being incapable of supporting last of us online because they know it's going to take the next 10 years and they have other games to make where bend who i i love them i really enjoyed days gone for what it was i desperately wanted days gone too but with most of the key individuals that made that game no longer being there they have clearly made the decision to change a studio and with the closure of sony london um recently and then the lot the, the the disconnection between them and deviation um and then there was that uh i think that was the mobile studio there was another the mm. mobile studio got shut down too a bunch of layoffs i think the only reason that ben survived is because they're doing this if they weren't doing this i think they'd be gone i'm, I'm gonna add one more quick bit Ooh. as well um it's nintendo related but i think it's a really fucking cool story you shut your uh, mouth so, so next week the servers are being shut down for mario the original mario maker none of that is like, relevant at all and, there was a bunch of fucking streamers out there called Team Zero Percent. They have beaten every single Mario Maker level that was ever uploaded. Really? They went and finished them all. Every single level has Holy been beaten. Holy shit, on that's Maker. genuinely impressive. Um, there's one left that they're still working on, but it turns out the person only managed to upload the file by using a tool assisted speedrunning uh, program to f complete the level for them, as it was at the time humanly impossible so it's absolutely so it's actually you, ha you, ha you have to beat your level to upload it yeah so they used a program to automatically beat the pro to beat the level to get it uploaded but uh as of i think i was watching a video yesterday they have almost beaten that level as human players well i'm just gonna put it out there the power of asd cool. everyone it the power so of cool. autism is allowing that to happen university <laughs> rules no fucking normie would do that. Why would a normie want to do that? But it's, it's pretty cool for a community to come together and be like, you know what? Our servers are being shut down. We're going to beat every single fucking level ever uploaded. It's also insane that they're shutting them down, by the way. Well, Mario Maker 2 exists. Oh, yeah. And and no one owns a fucking... What are they called? What was the one before the Switch? Wii U? The one with the stupid tablet. Yeah, Wii no one owns a Wii U anymore. Yeah, a lot of people owned a Wii U when, they, when they're available. I bought one. It fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bought, one, I bought look, it for one game. I bought it for Zombie U. So, wait, because the person who plays the uses the tablet would place the fucking zombies down for the other players. Oh, okay, yeah, that novelty, and that, that, that novelty sold me, and then I realized it was fucking. Shit. So my <laughs> mate got. I remember going because when I was at uni at the time, my mate got it. We went, we went and picked it up midnight. Went back and played it, and we played Zombie U. And I was like, oh, this is shit. He was really yeah. excited about it because he spent money and was like, wanted it to be good. And I'm like, this Were you there that night when I picked it up? <laughs> no, nah, this was when I lived in Melbourne. So this was like, no <laughs> chance. No, I, li I was living in the northern suburbs at that point. But um, like I said, like the one decent thing about, you know, the Wii U is there were some good games on it then, then they re put them onto other things. But, um, you know, there's always new games to play, Max. Mm -hmm. Here's the games that are coming out this week. Have a fucking oh, the best thing about last week, Max, like, there's no games coming out. Proceeds so to good. then three hours later go, yeah, there's like nine games coming out, by the way. I'm fucked. Like, thanks, Max. <laughs> Sends me a picture of all these games. I'm like, not helpful. The show is edited. It's uploading. I can't change it. And why? And I, since when do we do fucking post edits, Max? <laughs> To be fair, I think it was also like a day later. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, yeah. I'm exaggerating on the on the how recent it was, but it was like enough time to be like, thanks. Yeah, you could have nah, done it so this week when there's no fucking games. <laughs> oh. God damn it! Are you checking? Because like you've given me what? what... Well, I'm, okay, so there's a game in the upcoming spoiler alert for third of April. There's a game called Deceit Two coming to PlayStation yeah. Five. I have the original Deceit on Steam, Oh. and I wanted to see if it was actually a sequel to that, and it turns out it fucking totally is, and I may pick this up. So what, what is Deceit? So Deceit is one of those, um, <clears throat> it's a 3D Among Us, 
so it's it's one of those social uh, investigation games. Oh, where, one of those uh, like some like like where, secret like, wills within yeah, or secret Hitler like or whatever. Yeah. Secret Hitler or whatever. Yeah, um, and it's so so much fun. It's one of those. It's a it's a fucking free to play game. Um, this one's not spoiler alert. Well, actually, according to Steam, Play to See Two is free to play. But um, essentially, you go and do tasks together as a team, and then there's two people who are. Um, I think in Deceit 1, they're werewolves and you fucking transform at night time and you fucking go and slay everyone out. And they and the, the, their job is to try and either arrest you during the day and like, um, like zip tie you up so you can't, or kill you at night while you're a bad boy. So much fun. I'm stoked that there's a Deceit 2. Didn't even know that. You made this My list, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah, you, you didn't just have that realization this very second. I assumed you I, had it I earlier. When I, I didn't, well, I didn't read it earlier. I just, I, I literally copied and pasted this list. Spoiler alert! And now that I'm reading the list, I'm like, fuck. There's some games in here, and by some, I mean one. This one game has my attention. Yeah, the one. God damn it! All right, Max. You more seeing as it's your turn, you can read the rest of them out now. All right, cool. I'll come. Get less okay. excited about the other ones upcoming channel 2nd of april we have saviorless on ps5 and withering rooms on ps5 not withering april, heights not the kate bush song no no the third of shout april out to two it. stranger things references in the one episode by the way uh, 3rd of april was the aforementioned deceit 2 coming to ps5 oh, and the fourth of april mention fucking Freedom margaritas get you <laughs> get your vocabulary going PS5, PS4, and if you ever wanted, if you ever thought Rocket League and soccer sucked, here's Turbo Golf Racing on PS4. <laughs> um, I played Turbo Golf Racing like last year because it was part of Xbox's fucking preview program. Oh, yeah. It's literally Rocket League, but it's golf. So you have eight people all trying to fucking mini golf car bash their golf ball into a hole before everyone else. Is so is it is it about getting it in quicker or like is it still par based? It's always, always getting it in quicker. Hot. And there's no such thing as pars. They're like big race tracks that you have to push your ball down and get it in the get it in the end zone. Then that's not golf. Yeah, but you know it is. But it's a driving range, Ryan. We're not playing eighteen holes. But the driving range, you wang it once and then you see. No, where but it ends. no, but I'm driving my car on the range and I'm just pushing the ball along. <laughs> then that's just Rocket League. That's why it's called golf racing, because it's not it's not golf holing, it's racing on the golf course. <laughs> if, if it was golf holing, that's a good name. It's uh, a damn shame. But oh, that does bring us to the end of the show. Big thank you to everyone that listened to the whole way through, and even the part about um, holing, I guess. Holing. Uh, it is always a joy doing this show. You even get to say dumb shit. I get ranty in the middle there somewhere, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, Mute's like, yes, yes. You did get ranty in the middle there, you piece of shit. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, me. I appreciate it. He did not say any of them. He just said, yes, yes. I, I extrapolated on the rest um, to, to continue my own narrative. Uh, Max, let's close this bad boy out. Send him home. Well, everybody, as I blare white screen on my other monitor. Uh, well, everybody, I didn't even wrap like- the show and you're like, I'm already looking at other tabs. I'm done. <laughs> I didn't realize my Twitter wasn't on dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, everybody, this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, as well as not at... Oh, shit. I picked the shittiest pen in the world to do fucking <laughs> notes with. It sucks ass. Um, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, you can come and check out our socials. Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and X. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash Bob Cultures Week. Watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you... Wait. If you want, if you want to become part of the show, you can... Uh, no, wait. Uh, twitch.tv slash Bob Cultures uh, if you want to support the show, you can by uh, telling your friends, telling your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are listening to us on our podcast service, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash thepopculturist, as well as our merchandise store, popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. I hope I didn't damage my wall when I yeeted that pen. I have an inspection next week.
I'm trying to work out how the fuck Paige saw credits on Helldivers 2. I think it's just in the options menu. <laughs> I think that, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Mac, uh, Mac got distracted midway through the show because our good friend Paul James was like, I got credits on Helldivers. It's like, that's not how this game fucking works. What's his claim? You, wrote, no, he, you know the, 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 the Twitter list that he has. Yeah, yeah. Games the game's is completed. He, yeah. He's like, like, 20 minutes ago, I rolled credits on Helldivers. So I'm like, fuck off. That game doesn't have credits. No, it doesn't. And then he sent a YouTube video of, of the credits. But like... <laughs> How is he deeming... Is he just deeming that he's done with it? I think he's deeming that he's done with it because I don't think there's an end game. No, there like, isn't an end game. There's no campaign for you sure. to... Yeah. I think he's talking out his ass, but whatever. Well, yeah, you know, I can't talk. I've only finished like fucking three games this week, uh, this year and one of them was last this week, so... In short, sure fuck... you've done more than three. You beat Tekken. Yeah, well, that's the other one. <laughs> that's the other one. <laughs> I've played a lot of like never-ending games this year, like MLB and WWE and... Is it, is, is it just Prince of Persia, Tekken, and fucking Alone in the Dark for you? What a year. Oh. I'll my phone here. Yeah, I'll tell you what I've done this year. Oh, shit. This fucking episode's still going. Where's my notes? Samsung notes. Uh, game is played. Here we go. Oh, I it's April a- Fool's. Yeah, today. Is that, maybe that, is that what he's fucking with? No, but it's not April Fool's yet. It's still the 31st. Oh, okay. Okay, so I rolled credits on Final Fantasy Strangers in Paradise, mm. Prince of Persia, mm. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, mm. Tekken 8, Final Fantasy Rebirth. Mm. <clears throat> That's it. Well, yeah, look, I got, so I've got Prince of Persia, Tekken 8, and Alone in the Dark. So games that I've played this year, Cyberpunk 2077, <clears throat> super long, got distracted, left it. Last of Us Part 2, got distracted, left it. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, that game is stupid long. Silent Hill, the short mass- short message that came fucking sucked. Uh, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. I don't want to finish it. Hell Divers 2 cannot be finished. WWE 2K24, the modes that I play can't be finished. MLB The Show, the modes that I play can't be finished. Rise of the Ronin, don't want to finish it. Gas Station Simulator cannot be finished. Supermarket Simulator cannot be finished. Forest Farm, I don't believe it can be finished. High Fire Rush, playing it currently, haven't finished it. My choice of games have been have been poor for credits so far fair. this year. It's, it's like that time that I said I was going to finish fucking Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, that was a dumb move. It's fucking three years later and you still haven't done it yet. Speaking of three years later, this episode should have finished by now. Bye, everyone.